Hi, nine out of 10 people will have headaches sometime in their lives. So it is good to know the symptoms and the different types of headaches that exist. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the different types of headache, the symptoms that they come with and how they're classified. And headaches can be divided into two main groups, primary headaches and secondary headaches. Primary headaches are those headaches that arise by themselves and are not caused by an underlying illness or anatomical abnormality. Secondary headaches on the other hand are always the result of some other process that is taking place in the body. Now primary headaches can be divided into four groups. The first group being the migraines and migraines are headaches that appear on one side of the head although migraines can be bilateral as well in about 40 percent of cases lasting from anywhere from 4 to 72 hours they are throbbing pulsating in nature they are moderate to severe uh, intensity and these headaches are generally accompanied by other symptoms such as nausea and vomiting photophobia and phonophobia which means sensitivity to light and sensitivity to sound. Now, <clears throat> migraines can present with aura or without aura. And an aura is defined as a neurological symptom that accompanies the headache, precedes or accompanies the headache. Most often it precedes the headache. And auras come in many different forms. The most common type of aura is a visual aura. And patients report blurring of vision, uh, seeing dots in their visual field and seeing zigzag lines in their visual field as auras that precede the migraine attack. In some cases, patients will experience hours before what we call premonitory signs that warn of the impending headache such as irritability, excessive yawning, fatigue, excessive drowsiness, anxiety. These warn the patient that in the near future the migraine headache may occur. Chronic migraine is migraine that occurs on 15 or more days per month if at least eight of those days the headache is characteristic of migraine in terms of having all the uh, accompanying symptoms that I described such as photophobia, phonophobia and nausea and vomiting. Status migrainosis is a form of migraine that lasts for more than 72 hours. The second type of primary headache is what we call tension type headaches and tension type headaches have different features when compared to migraine headaches. The headache is bilateral, it appears on both sides of the head. The character of the headache is different. The headache is not a pulsing headache, it is a tightness, a pressure that the patient describes around the head. The headache is not as intense as the migraine, it is a mild to moderate intensity and tension type headache can be classified as either episodic or chronic. If they're episodic, they appear for less than 15 days per month. If if they are chronic, they appear on more than 15 days in a single month. Trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia is the third group of primary headaches that we shall talk about today. And these TACs include headaches that have symptoms of autonomic nerve stimulation. The autonomic nervous system is the, that part of the nervous system that controls the glands, such as the sweat glands. And the secretory glands in the nasal passages so that patients who have TACs have running of the nose, they have stuffy nose, they have sweating in certain parts of the face, they have other symptoms such as conjunctival injection and they may have tearing from the eyes. So autonomic symptoms are characteristic of trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia and the headache pain arises in the distribution of the nerves and of the vessels that accompany the trigeminal nerve in the face and in the head. One of the most common headaches that is placed in this category of headaches is the cluster headache. Cluster headaches are of extreme severity that usually presents on one side of the head 
as the name suggests cluster headaches occur in clusters periods of weeks to months during which the patient experiences up to eight attacks per day which generally resolve and, and during a period of remission which can last for months to years the patient will have no symptoms patients that get cluster headaches usually experience drooping of the eyelid and narrowing of the pupil paroxysmal hemicrania is also one of the forms of headache in this group in this type of headache which is accompanied by autonomic symptoms and which can occur up to 20 times per day lasting from 5 to 30 minutes at a time the next group of TACs is the SUNCT or SUNA group of headache SUNCT is an acronym for short lasting unilateral neurology form headache attack with conjunctival injection and tearing and SUNA is an acronym for short acting unilateral neurology form headache attack with autonomic symptoms and these are fleeting headaches they are short lived lasting for seconds to minutes one side of the head and they can occur up to 200 times per day they are accompanied by other types of autonomic symptoms hemicrania continua belongs to this group as well and hemicrania continua is a type of headache that affects one side of the head and that lasts for months it can last for over three months and it can wax and wane in intensity, usually is a throbbing, pulsating pain on one side of the head. Other primary headache disorders is the fourth group of primary headache. This group includes benign exertional headaches such as exercise induced headache, cough induced headache, and coital headache. Exercise induced headaches, as the name suggests, are caused by exercise or triggered by exercise. Cough headache, similarly by cough, and coital headaches usually occur in relation to or orgasms so during the build up to orgasm or during the onset of orgasm patients complain of headache that are bilateral and that last for hours at a time primary stabbing headache is a group of headaches that are usually referred to as ice pick headaches or jab and jolt syndrome and these are stabbing headaches that occur in either side of the head that occur frequently per day multiple times per day the last group of headaches are the secondary headaches and the secondary headaches are due to underlying illness so that any kind of trauma for instance can lead to headache and that would be classified as a secondary headache or disease of the blood vessels such as inflammation of the blood vessels vasculitis or blockage of the vest vessel causing a stroke or rupture of the vessel causing bleeding into the brain these can lead to a secondary headache a drug use mostly with withdrawal from drugs can lead to headache drug withdrawal headaches and one of the most common type of headache is caffeine withdrawal infection can cause headache if patient has meningitis they usually complain of pain and infection in the lining of the brain anatomical structures in the head can also lead to headache for instance if patient has chronic sinusitis that can lead to headaches or if there are dental problems as could uh, eye strain like with any illness it is important to seek professional medical help as soon as possible headache syndromes can be symptoms of serious underlying medical conditions so it is important to undergo a thorough professional medical evaluation if there are any topics you'd like us to discuss in future videos i'd be delighted to hear about them in the space below so please leave your comments and if you have derived any benefit from this video please share it with someone else until such time stay healthy and thanks for watching